All right. Hey, everyone. I am here with Tracy Martin. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Jen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So I wanted to bring you on because you are a real estate agent and you've been an agent for a while. You've, you have a, you're a licensed appraiser. You've been in the mortgage industry. You've been in REOs and asset management. I mean, you've basically done all the things in real estate. I don't know how, how many years do you think is like total, like your whole life? Geez, it seems like it. Um, I don't want to date myself here, but it's at least 35 years or so. So, yeah. So Uh, you you practice real estate, though, as a residential realtor in um, with Century 21 in Florida. Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, Century 20 Hanson Realty, Christine Hanson. Okay. um, Awesome broker. Perfect. So we wanted to talk about based on your experience, because here's the thing, like we all know that the best predictor of the future is the past, right? Exactly. So what, what do you think, nobody knows, but like, what do you think we're going to be seeing like by the end of the year within like the next year regarding residential real estate? Well, you know, it's a good question. And, and I think that you'll get a different answer anybody you talk to. Yeah. Um, uh, back for the financial recession, you know, back in 2006, 2007, um, I kind of could see it coming because I could see prices were escalating, especially in Florida. Um, there was a lot of speculation in the housing market, people buying to think that they could flip and um and make a ton of money and not necessarily have the means to make the mortgage payment if anything unforeseen happened or they couldn't flip it. Um, Especially a lot now, even it's like, you think new, especially for new like landlords, they think that like the mortgage, the tenants will just pay the mortgage, but like what happens if they don't, you have to have some backup. Oh, you, you, you've got to. And right now with COVID and the moratoriums and, and hopefully that's straightened out now, but yeah, I mean, it's scary. It's yeah. scary. You got to be able to have the means to carry a property or an investment property until, um, you know, things can turn around. So right. um, I don't see that happening uh, this time around. Mm-hmm. I don't see some of the telltale signs. I mean, interest rates are lower than they were then. Uh, I don't see as much speculation with the uh, multifamily markets like I did then with a lot of people buying the multifamily and it didn't matter what the cash flow was or the cap rate. They were just buying it to turn them into condos. I don't see that. I see people more interested in, in if it's financially feasible. Um, and like I said, interest rates are lower. You know, they might tick up a little bit from what everybody's saying. We might be back up into threes, mm-hmm. maybe uh, low threes uh, by the end of the year. Um, well, I, think I think it would be good if we went up a little bit because then it, it gives some room for us to go down if we need to. But it's like they've been up, they've been low for too long and you can't yeah. really go lower. Like you can, but there's no, nothing will happen. Like it won't make a change, you know? Right. There's, there's no benefit uh, from lower mortgage rates. They have to go a little bit higher and then people realize that there's lower rates out there and then yeah. that spurs them in the market. Um, I mean, but really, I'm on it. let's think about where, you know, I remember when six and 7% was a good interest rate. So we've lost a little perspective on, you know, oh my gosh, interest rates are up, it's 3%. You know, I mean, it, you know, I, I mean, interest rates were... Eight, nine, ten, thirteen percent. Eighteen percent. Yeah. In the yeah, in the like late seventies, right, early eighties. What do you think about the housing shortage? Like, what what do you think is something? Like, how do you think that's going to go away, or how it be alleviated? Um, I don't think it's going to. I think we're going to have an inventory shortage probably well into 2022. I mean, there might be a little bit of a correction once the uh, CARES Act and all that runs out uh, and there might be some foreclosures. I don't see much weakening in the market. Um, I think that'll be just brief. I think it might slow down the increase in prices, but in Florida, I, I really think that you're still going to see increasing 
prices and values well into 2022 mm -hmm. with these interest rates being so low. So even if they tick up, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I mean, I think remote working um, is here to stay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that maybe where you're going to see some softening is probably the uh, commercial office space because honestly, they're just going to say, hey, we have as much production, so we don't need to have an office. And well, maybe that office. can like those buildings can help solve the affordable housing crisis and re get repurposed or something. That's actually happening. Very smart. Yes. A lot of them are being repurposed and, and put into uh, affordable housing or they're being turned into warehousing for, you know, since a lot of shop uh, online is oh, becoming crazy. such a big. It's crazy. It would kind of be cool. Like if like some of those industrial areas were turned into like housing and work where it's like maybe a four small like three or four story building and you live on like the third and fourth but on the main floor is like some convenience stores or a wine bar or, like whatever and then the second floor is like your office you know I would love cool. that I would love to see that I mean we have a lot of commercial it's malls, yeah, places that are just not being utilized to their full extent anymore. So, um, what's highest and best use now, exactly. right? So, right. I mean, that's like, yeah. I mean, you as an appraiser, like that's something that you deal with all the time. It's like because people. I remember like a few years ago, tons of people were turning churches into houses, and there was like sort of an appraisal problem there. It was like. Like, how are we going to resell this? You know, like, it's still a church. Like, it looks like a church. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, that is a tough one. And so people are having to, like, pay cash and stuff. But I think to your point, there's a lot more cash in the market than there was back in, like, 08, 2010 and all that. Like, people are paying. So they are, they can't afford the house. That's affordability for their loan is not the issue, which is, was the issue back then, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think I was reading somewhere that 35% of the buyers now uh, are cash buyers, where it was- it's So much, I mean, dang, it's crazy. But then you, you, when you have that many cash buyers, then the problem becomes like affordable housing and people that, that do need loans. And it's not because they don't qualify, they just don't have the- thousands, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. It's ridiculous, you know, and should, I mean, the question is then like, should they have to have that to buy a house? I think as a society, we've already said, no, we don't think they should, but like, we're not giving them anything to buy. Exactly. And, and I mean, that is a really big problem in Florida, as you know, I mean, our right. economic base, I mean, it's a lot of tourism. It's not real high paying like tech jobs, even though uh, I understand that we're bringing a lot more of that now into the state. Uh, so there is some room to grow there. But um, that was one of the problems I saw in the housing market before in the recession was the fact that, you know, teachers and uh, uh, service industry, uh, uh, police right. officers, mm -hmm. you know, they couldn't afford the homes and, and quite honestly, if I hadn't already bought my house, I couldn't afford it to the price that went up. So thank goodness I had it. Right. You know? So yeah, and and uh, we just don't have the economic base to support some of the prices that were coming at that time. And they're creeping up there again. Mm -hmm. um, but like you know, I we're said, we're dealing I, with that a lot in Cincinnati too. It's like you have somebody that's approved, like. Uh, you know, before our average was about 250, around 250. And in order to afford, like you're a lender. So like in order to afford a house at 250,000, what would you have to make? I mean, it's not a lot, you know, it's under, it's under a hundred thousand dollars. It's probably closer to like 60 ish. Right. Sound right. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, right. But now it's like that same house is worth 400,000 and that you do have to make a lot more and you're still making 60 or 75,000. I mean, how many people are getting the um, money from the government, which is everybody that made under 75,000. A lot of people are getting it. So like, what can those people buy? They're having to buy something under 250, which if we did in our market and our search, it's, it's nothing or it's junk, you know, or it's so far out that it makes no sense. 
Yeah, I mean that that price point doesn't even exist in South Florida right now. I mean, <laughs> ever it's like never existed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's it's you know it's, it's a crazy. challenge. Yeah. I think affordable, that that uh, challenge is never going to go away. Affordable housing is always going to be something um, the whole nation is going to have yeah. to figure out. I mean, yeah. um, and I think, like you said, repurposing some of these commercial that's going to be sitting there empty mm -hmm. is probably going to be a big uh, future trend, I hope. It'll have to be because that's where the land is, right? So like you have like one store that sits on like an acre of land in the middle of this one like Walmart that sits on an acre. Well, Walmart's a bad example, but like whatever, a department store that nobody goes to. It sits on an acre of land in the middle of town. It's like, okay, well that land, an acre, like you can put a lot of houses on an acre oh or you can put even more condos or apartments or townhouses, right? So it's like, I mean, and it's pretty convenient. You're right there on the main drag. Yeah, and they have a thousand parking spaces. So right, you've got all that too. So it's like, I mean, how I don't know. I'm not a developer, but it seems like you could put a handful of houses at least. And it might not solve. I mean, it would have to be on like a large scale. Like one isn't going to do a, a ton of, but like, you know, a thousand of those or more, ten a thousand of those would make a big difference. You know? Exactly. And housing starts are up down here. So that's a positive sign that, you know, we're, we're getting, there's more builders right now. They're back to building. Um, the problem is we just don't have a lot of land, like you said. Yeah. So. Well, in the building we've seen in our market, like a lot of the new builds have expired. The listing has expired. I think, I think it's kind of twofold. One, I think they're still too high. And then for price wise, because it's, it's tough yeah. to build them, right? And then yeah. like, secondly, people have trouble, even though they can see the drawing, they can't see the product. So it makes it a lot harder because you and I know that like buying a house is about falling in love and you exactly. fall in love when you're standing in the kitchen, you fall in love yeah. when you're like in the master or like whatever, right? Like in places in the house, it's difficult to fall in love with a piece of paper. Yeah, I think that's true because I've 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 always thought that with virtual showings and stuff because people are like, eh, I'm still not sure, you know. Yeah. You gotta see it. You gotta be there. You I gotta feel it. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I think the virtual showing's a little bit easier than a paper listing, just because in the virtual showing, like even though you're not there, you could still like see the things, right? Like the things exist, but like on paper, it doesn't exist. I mean, even if even if new builders could build like a, like a model, like a 3D model of it, it would even be better than just a flat paper. Hey, maybe. Jen, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Full of ideas today. <laughs> that's awesome. Who thought of that? Maybe I should be a developer and a builder. There you yeah, go. I'm going into it. Thanks for the <laughs> motivation. <laughs> okay, so we're thinking just to kind of like round out the conversation, we're thinking that like not a ton is going to change within now and maybe even like in the next six or 12 months, we might see like an increase in interest rates, but not like dramatic. And we're still thinking there's going to be housing shortage. Boo. Yeah, I still think that we're going to have a shortage. I mean, there's still people uh, that want to work remotely and want to move out of the big cities and and uh, get into a house in like Florida. And I know it's it's big in a, a lot of the Midwestern states. I have the same shortage, uh, inventory shortage. So yeah, I I don't see that changing. Um, and until fl inflation really is a problem, interest rates are gonna st stay, you know, historically yeah. low. Yeah. So, and that whole work uh, life play, I think that's gonna be huge in the future. That's gonna spur the developments, like you said. And and I- Yeah, I, because I, that'll drive people back into the city. Cause you, like I live in the city now and honestly, it's like my best life because like I can work, there's tons of co-working spaces so I can go work from anywhere. I can walk everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's awesome. Like, I, I don't think I would ever live in the suburbs again. I remember one time I lived in the suburbs and I got hives. I was like, I can't live here. <laughs> I was like, where, 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 where am I supposed to go? 
<laughs> I live down here and I know a lot of people I live out. I live east. Uh, so I'm in the city. But a lot of people are like when I used to live out west and in, in uh, another city and plantation, people are like, oh, no, we don't go past 95. We can't come visit. So, yeah, I get it. <laughs> exactly. That's how it is in every city, right? Like you yeah. have these lines that are like, I don't know how to get there. And it's like, <laughs> OK, but it's like literally five minutes from you. And they're like, no, I don't go. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Well, I appreciate your insights. I think it's always good because like, you know, I mean, I've been in the business for 12, but you've been in for 35. So it's like, you've seen things, you're seeing it from a different perspective. So I think it's good for us to like have these conversations and because we can only know based on what we know. We just don't know. What we don't know. It's a problem, right? Yeah, well, you know, real estate's got a cycle and I've seen ups and downs. But the reasons. cycle hasn't like, it hasn't come around. And so everybody's like, when is it gonna happen? Like what goes up must come down. Like this is a principle of physics, but like, it's not down. No, no, it, I mean, I think it will, but not much. I mean, the gradual trend is up. I mean, I, I was reading something the other day that real estate investments have, even with the collapse in 2008, um, it has been a, about a 9.8 or 10% return. I mean, yeah. so year over year, even considering, you know, the collapse, that's a pretty good investment. Yeah, it's true. I mean, real estate, well, in 2008, 9 and 10 is when I bought a lot of my properties too, you know? So they, you can always find good investments you just sometimes have to be creative and patient exactly it's just like a, a real estate appraiser i always overpay for my properties <laughs> so, of course you do <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's so funny well i really appreciate you being on if people do have a referral for you in florida what is the best way to get a hold of you uh, Century 21 Hanson Realty. Just uh, look at look for me in the website, Tracy Martin C21 at gmail.com. I'm here. I'm available. <laughs> awesome. So, Thank you, Tracy, so much. Okay. Enjoy your day. Thank you. You too, Jen. Thank you. <laughs>